gardeners welcome to today's video we are here with metamora my green tree python not gonna keep her out the entire time but just wanted to show you guys her in the beginning because she is absolutely beautiful i'm gonna put some clips of her throughout the video but we are finally going to be talking about the challenges of keeping green tree pythons because these are not for beginners they're highly challenging but they're totally worth it and a lot of people are interested in getting one so we are going to dive right in and i'm gonna put her back but here is a close-up of this beauty. She's all tucked in and ready to go back to sleep. All right, guys, so we are going to get into it. The very first challenge about keeping green tree pythons is that it can be pretty challenging to find one in the first place that is healthy and captive bred. Um, if you go to reptile shows, at least the ones that I have been to, a lot of the times that I do see these animals, they are always wild caught and they do not look like they are in good health whatsoever. So it's very important to make sure that if you do want to get one of these guys, you really make sure that you're getting it from a captive bred breeder and it looks healthy and you get as much information as possible from the breeder before getting one. Um, Cause you don't want to get one from the wild. A lot of the times they have parasites and mites and just end up deteriorating because they are not in good health and then being put through the stress of going into a new environment and a new home and all of that while you're sick is not good and it just really I mean a lot of them their health just declines quickly and rapidly and then they just end up dying so it's not something that you want um it is kind of hard to find breeders for them because they are not very common I mean I feel like it is kind of hard to find breeders for them. Um, for me, I actually went to a local reptile store in my city um, called Curious Creatures. So they got her captive bred from another breeder, but they also breed their own. So I knew that she was coming from a good place and she was very healthy when I got her. So it's just very important because they're already challenging enough as it is. So you don't want to end up with the challenge of dealing with a sick snake on top of everything and then putting them through the stress while they're already sick. It's just a lot and you don't want to deal with it. So definitely make sure that if you are getting one, it is healthy and it is captive bred and not wild caught. Number two is that these animals are very fragile. So they are fragile, not only physically, but in their care. They're just very delicate. They need a very specific environment. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in my later points. Um, but physically with them, they are very, very fragile in the sense that mainly it's their prehensile tail. Um, their prehensile tail looks like really skinny and it kind of looks like a little worm. And it's interesting because they actually use that to lure in prey, which is really interesting in the wild. So they may like wiggle that tiny little tail around. It'll distract the prey and it'll be like, what is that? Is that a worm? And then as they go in closer to see what it is, the green tree python strikes and has the food. Um, that prehensile tail also just helps them to hold on to branches and they really loop it around. It is so weird looking. A lot of people think that like the snake is sick or something because they're not used to seeing a prehensile tail like that. And a lot of the times it's just black on the end and it doesn't match the rest of the snake. And that's just how they are. Um, but the thing is they loop that thing around branches quite a bit. So if you ever were trying to like pull the snake off of a branch, it could really damage their tail and their spine and it is not something you want to deal with. That is a very, very delicate part of their body. So, I mean, obviously it's not good to pull one of these snakes off of a branch anyway. They're most likely going to bite you because they're highly defensive. Um, but it is something to keep in mind, especially with the babies because they're much smaller. They're going to be more fragile. So it's just something to pay attention to and be aware of before you get one of these animals. It's not really an animal that you're going to be handling a lot anyway. It's more of a look, don't touch. So I just wanted to make that clear, but a lot of people are still going to try to handle and all of that. And it's good to be aware of how to do it just so that way you're not hurting the snake because they are just very, very fragile animals. And it's one of the reasons why they're just a little bit more defensive and people think that they're really mean because they're just protecting themselves. Number three dives into a little bit more of that um, very specialized care that they need and that is humidity. So humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. It is something that is pretty challenging for people that are new to keeping reptiles because it's not something that people typically think about too often. 
um, and it's not something that you just know how to do right off the bat unless you've done research and have an understanding of it. It is important for green tree pythons though because if you don't give them the proper humidity they can actually get a respiratory infection, they can get really sick, or they can have issues with getting their shut off. If there's not enough moisture they can get a lot of stuck shed and it's not really something you want to deal with with a green tree python having to remove stuck shed off of them. I've had to do it a few times. It is, it's not, it's kind of nerve-wracking and it's not very fun for your snake either so it's definitely best to avoid that by providing the proper humidity for your animal. Sometimes it's a little difficult for me. It was like switching different types of tanks and enclosures and trying to like gear it and get the humidity where it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, it, it can happen. So it's something to be aware of. It's one of the challenges. Humidity is just something that you kind of need to get experience with and do trial and error in your setup. Some things that can help you boost humidity are having a moist substrate, spraying down the enclosure. I recommend spraying down the enclosure every single morning as well as every single night. You do want there to be a dry period during the day. Um, the range for their humidity is actually quite large and confusing. It is 40 to 70%. So 40 is really on the low end of the spectrum and 70 is pretty high. So it's like, okay, well, there's a lot in between that. So how do you accommodate that? The thing is you want that boost every single morning and every single night, and then it can go to that lower 40% during the day. Typically when you're going to have the lights on, it's going to dry up that moisture during the day, which is actually good because you do want the substrate to dry out as well. You don't want it to be an overly moist and wet environment because that can cause scale rot and just be gross. It can be a gross environment that can have a lot of bacteria for your snake that you don't want there to be. Um, some other things that help with humidity are using live plants, using a large shallow water bowl. They don't typically drink from it, but it will help to raise the humidity in the setup. Um, so those are just a few things. Moss also will help retain humidity when you spray down the enclosure. So all of those things are great. One last thing for humidity, I don't use it, but you can. A fogging machine will also raise humidity. Um, so yeah, those are just a few of the tips. Um, also keeping a PVC enclosure, highly recommend because it really locks in the humidity for them. Keeping them in a tank can be very difficult to keep the humidity where you want it to be. So yeah, those are just a few of the tips. Doing a ton of research and all this before you get one is just critical because their care is just, again, very specialized and not easy for beginners. Um, but it is possible if you're really passionate, you do the research and you are ready for the challenge, then go for it. Number four is temperature. So green tree pythons don't really have like a really high temperature that they need similar to other snakes. Their temp range during the day is actually 75 to 89 degrees, which again is kind of a big spectrum to go off of. What's interesting is that I have noticed with my green tree python, I've heard it from other people as well, is that they love 83 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is exactly what Metamora wants. And they can overheat. You don't want to overdo it with these guys, but they also need enough heat to properly digest their food. So 83 degrees is her happy place. Anything more than that, and she will like go to the ground because she's not happy and she's trying to cool down. Um, so yeah, it's just one of those things. Using a temp gun will really help you to figure out the temperature that your snake is in. Highly recommend having one if you have a green tree python. Um, and then if you are trying to gear the temperature to get it exactly where your green tree python wants it, um, basically just go by wattage. It also depends on the space of the basking area to your light. So if it's not warm enough, you can either use a higher wattage bulb or you can just boost the basking area up where your green tree python is. That way it's closer to the light. And then you can use the temp gun and figure out what the range is and make sure it's comfortable for your snake. All of that sounds overly complicated. It's really not that difficult, but it sounds like a lot and it can be very overwhelming for someone that is new to keeping reptiles. So again, one of the reasons it's just pretty challenging and it's not for beginners because it's just a lot that goes into it. It's a lot of trial and error and trying to get things proper for your animal to have the right environment and feel comfortable and and be able to thrive in that environment. Number five is probably the one that you will hear about the most with green tree pythons. 
and it's handling as well as personality in general. People are always asking me like, can you handle your snake? Is she nice? Is she mean? Like all of these things. And green tree pythons kind of have a bad rep because they are known to bite and be highly defensive. People will say it's aggressive, but it is purely a defensive behavior. Because as I mentioned, these are very fragile snakes. And number two, they're also arboreal. So they're up in the trees and they are pretty highly threatened by a lot of predators, including us. They're going to view us as a predator because they're just gonna be coiled up and they just don't wanna be seen. They blend in so well with the leaves. They don't want to be seen by anyone or anything. So when they are and you're coming towards them, they're most likely going to see you as a predator and they're gonna to wanna to protect themselves and they're probably gonna strike at you. There are so many different things that you can do to make your snake more comfortable with you. Um, and a lot of it is just respecting those boundaries and you may need to accept the fact that you're not gonna be able to handle your green tree python. I have been able to handle mine in the past if it's on her terms. If she wants to come out, that's fine. Um, if I, the thing is, if you want to take them out to do cleaning or whatever the case is, removable branches are going to be your best friend for a green tree python because you can't just take them off of a branch and they're going to be coiled around it. So if you want to take them out ever, just take the whole branch out. And the thing is, they may feel defensive at first, but Metamora, when I take her out on a branch, Sometimes she'll just recoil and kind of just hide and want to sleep like she did in the beginning of today's video. And other times she'll actually be a little bit curious and she may be sniffing a little bit, wants to look around and she has come out and slithered on me and I'm able to handle her. It's not something I've done that many times. It's not something that's frequent whatsoever because they're more of a look, don't touch animal. But handling can be possible, but it's not a guarantee. And it's all about respecting those boundaries. If your snake comes out and wants to do it on its own terms, that's one thing, but you can't force it on the snake because they're just gonna bite you and they're gonna feel threatened. So it's very important to realize this with green tree pythons because people, again, buy these animals, they think they're beautiful and they expect that they will be able to handle it. And it's not always a guarantee whatsoever. And it's definitely a look, don't touch type of animal. They are amazingly beautiful, stunning display animals. So they're completely worth it in my opinion. I love handling my animals. That's like some of the most enjoyment that I do get is from handling my reptiles. But having Metamora, I absolutely love that I don't have to handle her and I can just look at her and like see how beautiful she is and have a good relationship with her. Number six is the size of green tree pythons. So these snakes are very slow growers. If you get a baby, they are significantly smaller. Um, and even as adults, it's kind of confusing because even looking at Metamora, she is, how old is she now? She's either four or five years old now, and she doesn't look big. And I know she's she's still growing. She's still not even fully green, and she definitely is going to put more weight on and size. So, but for the most part, she's she's getting there. She's pretty close to full grown. But the thing is, they get five to six feet when they're full grown, and it doesn't really show and it's hard to tell because they're always coiled up on a branch. Their body is just completely coiled. So you're gonna think that they're pretty small even though they are pretty large. And the thing is, these snakes are not active during the day. So you may not think that they need a lot of space. However, they absolutely do. Because these snakes are extremely active at nighttime. They will be everywhere in their enclosure like any possible place that they can go they go everywhere the entire night they're knocking things down they're brutalizing plants they're doing their own thing they're having like a little snake party that's how it is for metamora every single night so they definitely need the space so the thing is a lot of people actually would recommend that the largest enclosure or the minimum for them would be an 18 by 18 by 24 I had Metamora in that as a baby and she outgrew that because if you watch them at nighttime, they spread out so much, they need more space than that. So I upgraded from that to a two by two by two. She outgrew that as well. 
Now she's in a four by two by two PVC enclosure. And honestly, I would recommend that as a minimum for an adult because they use up all that space. And the other thing I do want to discuss is the size because there are arboreal reptiles. People think they need a really tall enclosure, but the thing is they need a lot of horizontal space because when you watch them at nighttime, they're going horizontal through the enclosure. That's how they climb in the trees as well. So that's why I really love the four by two by two PVCs and habitats enclosure for mine. I think that it is the perfect size for an adult. You can go even larger if you want to. I, they will absolutely utilize it. Like they take up every inch that they possibly can. They're just extremely active snakes and people don't realize that or don't really consider it because they're so inactive during the day, but that's just completely natural for them because they're nocturnal. And I promise you, your snake is going to enjoy the space that you give it at nighttime completely because literally every single inch is being used by Metamora every single night. So having an enclosure that size is not something that people will really consider. They might think, oh, well, it's pretty small. It's coiled up. It's not going to need much space. And they do go with those smaller options. And then it's just not what I recommend. I don't think it's good for them. I think they deserve more space than most people recommend. And I think you will have a happier and healthier snake if you give them more space to be able to crawl around and actually do things because they are so active. And keeping in mind like that is a lot of space. Um, not all of us just have a ton of space for reptile enclosures. So it is something to keep in mind because the four by two by two enclosure does take up a lot of space. It is technically 120 gallons. So again, something to be aware of because it's just, it's what I recommend. I think it is absolutely perfect for them. But yeah, it definitely makes it a little bit more challenging. So that is why it's on the list. Number seven is not a guarantee, but it is something that does happen here and there. And it is something that I deal with and that is picky eaters. So typically you hear this with green tree pythons when they're babies. A lot of breeders do have a harder or more challenging time trying to get them to eat at first. Um, they, I mean, these animals come from trees, they're arboreal, a lot of the times they want to eat like lizards and other things other than a rodent. So it can be challenging to get them to eat in the first place. If you have a good breeder, most likely they're going to make sure that the snake is already eating rodents and good to go, frozen thawed by the time you buy the snake. Um, Metamora was actually fine when I first got her. For the first few years, she was doing fantastic eating frozen thawed. And then she just completely stopped. And now the only thing that she eats is live mice, which I hate. It is traumatizing. I, I don't like thinking about it. I don't like seeing it. Like I can't stand it. But when you're keeping these animals, it may be one of the challenges that you have to deal with because you need to make sure that your snake is eating and healthy because it's your responsibility. So it is something that I deal with with mine and other people do deal with here and there as well. So I did want to put it on my list because these snakes are just not very easy. They do have a lot of different challenges and a lot of different things to be aware of before you make the decision to get one of them. So those are all of my challenges for green tree pythons. I hope that this video was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.